great evening. Oh my goodness, what a gorgeous day. And I loved, I loved the facts that we heard uh, on this beautiful night from our, our, our lovely legislators. For those that don't know me, yes, of course, I'm Michael Austin. And uh, if there's one thing I would love for you to take from this evening, it's that I'm not a politician. Yeah. <laughs> nothing, nothing negative against the fine gentlemen that were up here this evening. Um, but I'm actually an economist. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean I can tell you what the price of uh, lumber is going to go in the, in the next month? Or can I tell you how the uh, stock market is going to perform? Uh, no. And in fact, let me tell you this. There's a reason why God created economists. And it's to make weather forecasters look good. <laughs> As an economist, I don't guess the future. I deal in facts. And when I look at the history of our country, one fact stands out as clear as broad daylight to me. In places where there's more freedom, individuals, families, businesses, they make decisions that you know work the best for them and their loved ones. And in places where there's personal responsibility, places where people are trusted to do the right thing, guess what? They usually do the right thing. And there's no better example uh, than the great uh, Lindo family. Have you guys heard of the Lindo family at all? No. no? Okay, let me tell you, it's a great story. So, more than 100 years ago, oh, excuse me, sir. Would you mind one moment? More than 100 years ago, a young man by the name of Joseph Lindo left his home country of Cuba and went to another island, Trinidad and Tobago. There he met and married a woman named Essie. Now, these two were a bit of an odd couple. For example, Joseph had a natural knack. He could, he could see the opportunities that were in front of him. He was able to seize those opportunities, and through his just tenacity, he was able to find success. Essie, his wife, on the other hand, was more of a traditionalist. She had a fierce devotion to family and strongly believed in instilling principles that would last for generations and generations. Uh, what they had in common uh, uh, was a belief that, you know, the key to their flourishing, whatever their respects was, it was through freedom and self-sufficiency. So, as a budding family, they, they got themselves up and they moved to Panama. Joseph, for example, worked construction on the Panama Canal, earning silver for his work. Uh, his wife, Essie, turned the home into a grocery store and a laundry service, where most of her clients were the local police. See, she was even backing the blue, even 100 years ago. <laughs> From these actions, they were able to save enough money to send their oldest child to school. Um, and they taught their family the value of what? An entrepreneurial mindset, a love of family, and knowing that education, as Connie said, is the key to reaching greater, greater heights. And these principles were repeated generation after generation. For example, Essie's granddaughter was given money uh, from, uh, from the family to go to England to get a nursing degree. Then she left for America for more opportunities. Now in America, I think this family has, my goodness, they have doctors, they have lawyers, they have educators, they have linguists. Um, they're very successful. And in fact, uh, three generations later, uh, a descendant of the Lindo family was willing to do whatever it took to leave the high taxes, burdensome rules, and stifling socialist environment of New York City. In fact, she was willing to sell everything that she owned, except the clothes in her closets and the closets of her families, just so that she could leave to Kansas. This is my mother. <laughs> Joseph and Essie are my great, great grandparents. And in my blood uh, lies a history, right, that, uh, uh, that used freedom and a love of family to overcome any obstacles, any op opposition, all to reach the stars. And in my mind uh, lies the fact that no other country in this world promotes the upward mobility of its citizens than the United States of America. <laughs> why President Reagan called for government to show restraint, right, and have the utmost respect for our tax dollars. Uh, yet here in recent Kansas, uh, recent years in Kansas, as we most certainly noticed today, government has grown at the expense of families and businesses. Kansas, unfortunately, has a history of bad fiscal management. Yes, we cut taxes in 2012 and 2013, but we had to raise them again. Why? 
because we weren't willing to cut wasteful spending. Then, in the past three years, under the Kelly Rogers administration, it has, they have turned government into a welfare distributor, picking winners and losers, encouraging people to stay home instead of working, and keeping the Kansas economy from reaching its potential. And don't worry, we'll talk about government overreach under COVID. That's also a fact. Um, but it's also why I'm a strong believer in the principles behind the Constitution. A strong believer that people have inalienable rights and that if you give any one person or governmental body enough power to manipulate the public or, or, or to redistribute resources, you'll end with the destruction of our society. That's why I've been the foremost researcher, as you've seen today, behind freedom-oriented and family-focused po po Kansas policy in nearly a decade. As chief economist to two Republican Kansas governors, my focus was always on giving Kansans more opportunities to succeed. I estimated, I, I can't tell you, countless tax relief packages because that money belongs to you, not the government. So when legislators, yes, not the governor. And when legislators who preach conservative values turned around and said cutting wasteful spending can't be done, as an example, I wrote a Kansas state budget that saved a billion dollars of taxpayer money just to prove tax relief is always feasible. I was also the first to vocally push back on the Kelly Rogers COVID lockdown and mandates. Remember when her and her secretary uh, uh, misled the public on the effectiveness of mass mandates? You guys remember, we caught them in that lie. I caught them in that lie. And we drew national attention to their, ability, or to their attempt to manipulate the public. So I say this all the time, if you haven't guessed it by now, I support a radical, very radical policy I like to call keeping more of what you earn. <laughs> I support giving Kansans the tools to govern their own lives. I've spent my career educating and fighting for conservative principles, and it is far past time for state government to do the same. It's time for us to step up and protect, make sure that we protect the freedom that makes those opportunities possible. So today, if you can't tell, I am announcing I am running for Kansas State Treasurer because I believe now is the time to take a stand and demand that our money respected and our freedoms return to us. will focus on three main points. The first, expanding educational freedoms to all Kansans. Second, expanding financial freedom to future generations of Kansans. And last but not least, empowering Kansans by limiting government. Because first, oh. I'm so glad you like it. Um, <laughs> Because first, you don't have freedom when Laura Kelly or some self-anointed local school board member closes your school, pushes wokeness and grievance culture, and then leaves families with no way out. You know, Connie said it well, you know, research shows, even though schools are open today, research shows that because of distance learning, our children have retained about 70% of reading and 50% of math compared to in-person instruction. Think about that. Our children have learned only half as much as math as much in math because in Kansas the great equalizer shut its doors. We need to fix that. So I intend to give families the flexibility to set their kids up for a lifetime of success, providing the best education that suits each child's individual and unique needs. I'll expand access to tax advantage savings accounts, and I'll work with the legislature, our fine gentleman up here earlier today, to ensure that your tax dollars follow the child, not the system. If schools, if schools want to place draconian rules like they did last year or teach activism instead of academics like they're doing now, Kansas families should have the resources and the freedom to leave. Yeah. Second, you don't have freedom when you call for the government to give you free health care, free tuition, free stuff. A friend told me those calls are a hallmark of a socialist future creating a culture of debt and diverting them from a path to prosperity. Our young generation must know the dignity of work and the God-given joy that comes with it. You know, so I'll work with banks and financial institutions to introduce financial literacy courses for our young children. 
And you know what? Maybe some politicians can take it too. <laughs> That is how we create a free market future instead of a socialist one. So we should encourage young Kansans to examine their work and find the joy in knowing that they can bear their own load, their own weight, and not be a burden on others. Last but not least, you don't have freedom when politicians design and approve the largest tax increase in state history instead of making government effective and efficient. I wrote a state budget showing government can save taxpayers a billion dollars. I provided examples about how state agencies can recognize when programs are failing. As state treasurer, an office that is directly accountable to you, I will do what I've always done. Be your advocate. And so working with me, we can focus, uh, we can change the focus in Kansas government. We can put taxpayers first. If the past few years have shown us anything, it's that giving more power and control to the government has not made us better off. We've heard bureaucrats go from uh, uh, 15 days to slow the spread, to follow the science, to you know what, I'm just going to control nearly every aspect of your lives. Right? I want to highlight the other side of that equation. Thomas Sowell, uh, who's my inspiration to get into economics, he famously says, freedom has cost too much blood and agony to be relinquished at the cheap price of rhetoric. In other words, we cannot allow losing the very freedoms that made America so great in the first place. For this reason, I am sacrificing my resources, uh, my livelihood, <coughs> frankly, my peace of mind, uh, <laughs> so that I can remain free just like my ancestors before me. So I am Michael Austin, Republican and conservative for Kansas State Treasurer. I'm an economist, I'm a fiscal watchdog, I'm a proven champion of freedom, but most importantly, I'm a dad. I'm a husband, um, and I want to see Kansas succeed. But to do that, I need your help. Uh, let's send a message to the Kelly Rogers administration that you are the experts in your own lives, that you know what is valuable and what is not. That is my call to action. I'm asking for your support in this race. I'm asking for your vote when the time comes. I'm asking for your financial support to help get me across the finish line. Thank you, thank you, and thank you so much for coming out on this gorgeous day. If you're interested in supporting the campaign, please see uh, Tony in the back table, or you can visit our website, austinforkansas.com. There, you'll find that together we can bring honesty and responsibility to Topeka, we can improve the future of our kids, and we can bring freedom back to the free state. Thank you very much.